Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to Adventure Ready Van. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the subject of the channel, Dixie, the Adventure Ready Van. Here's a brief comparison of our 2006 Dodge Sprinter as we bought it in January 2021 compared to today. Here it is in 2021. This is in South Carolina. There it is today. So I, I bought the van from South Carolina, which means that it's it's it was virtually rust free, which is unusual for a sprinter of this vintage. Here's the interior, which is also very clean. As a dry cleaner's van, it was important to the to the business that it be clean, and that was the interior as it as it is today. Uh, so I, I designed and, and built out the conversion from basic cargo van to camper. Uh, this van is the culmination of an evolutionary design process that I've developed over 10 years and three different conversions. I've looked at many conversion ideas in the process. There are a lot of really clever ideas out there and people are really generous with their designs. While I've adopted some of the ideas that I've found in other designs, our priorities are somewhat different and the way I've, I approach the design to accommodate those priorities has been quite different from, from any other conversion I've seen. First, because the van is also my daily driver, uh, we needed the interior design to be flexible to allow for picking up materials at the lumber yard, making dump runs, and doing the occasional art show. Second, in camper mode, we needed to have a lot of storage space to handle our photography equipment and enough clothes and food for extended trips of up to six weeks so far. Uh, third, we needed it to be self-contained to allow us to camp with few or no amenities. Fourth, we needed it to be compact and agile to allow us to access remote areas where we don't know what kind of obstacles we may encounter. Um, lastly, we needed it to be economical and relatively comfortable to, to drive and camp in. The van we chose, a 2006 140-inch wheelbase high top 2500 or three-quarter ton sprinter, gave us an excellent foundation to build on. It provides enough headroom for me to stand in. I'm, I'm about six feet tall. It has good ground clearance, has roughly the same footprint as a full-size pickup, and it has a relatively short turning radius. With its inline five-cylinder 2.7 liter diesel engine, it's reliable and economical, delivering a consistent 22 plus miles per gallon. Uh, for a more detailed look at the conversion, here's a brief video tour. But here we start from the from near the passenger side rear wheel, uh, moving up. And there's the the solar panels you can see on the top, and there's an awning that you'll get a better view of later. The side awning. There's the fill for the 15-gallon bulk tank that's mounted under the floor. Uh, exhaust for the park for the diesel parking heater. There is the 15-gallon fuel tank. Closer look at the at the exhaust for the for the parking heater. Uh, there's a, a running board that, that I adapted. This was um, these these were designed for a, a full-size GMC crew cab pickup truck and uh, I had to do a little bit of modification to get them to work on this but uh, they work very well. There's a, a look at our, our um, luggage rack Another look at this at the running boards. This this running board was intended to be on the passenger side. One of the adaptations that I did was to swap them side by side because the the doors on this Sprinter are much closer to the wheel wells than on a on a pickup truck. There are our input ports for shore power and for the the ground deploy solar panel that I that I have that I can connect to extend the the solar array. Here's uh, one of the one of the three windows that I installed. Here's another of the three. The the two back ones are identical windows. And then moving back, here's a look at the the solar array, and there's the the rear the yawning over the rear doors. And this is the 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 access to the to the propane garage. Another look at the the side awning. This is a an 11 foot Dometic, and you can see there's a second bag that's 
that's underneath it, which holds a, a an end screen, an end curtain that I made to to attach to the to the rear end of the of the awning to provide more protection in a, a wind driven rain. And now we'll move to the back of the van. Nope, we'll go to the roof. This is the solar array, and there's the, the roof vent. And um, another look at the luggage rack. These are three panels at 160 watts apiece. There's the, the awning over the rear doors. This is looking inside the rear rear doors. The, the, the bed platform, the panel that I just lifted up, they're hinged and, and they're removable. Um, so I can clear this whole space out to to uh, haul big loads, and we have a, a tremendous amount of of storage area under the under the bed platform, which we use to store most of our our um, day to day camping uh, camping supplies, the food, and uh, this is the spice rack. Um, what I pulled out and set on the camp stool was. Um, was my crates that I built for canned goods. This is the the galley box, which is central to the to the galley setup. And the stove lives on top of it, and inside is our our cooking kit and the the cooking utensils and um, cutting boards and measuring cups and just about everything that is needed for um, for cooking cooking meals. Canned goods back in, and you can see on the left there are two six-gallon jerry jugs. There's a third up underneath the sink, which combined with the with the the 15-gallon bulk tank uh, gives us a capacity of 33 gallons, and we we can expand that. Um, now I'm I'm going to pull out. These are magnetic uh, rechargeable puck lights, which um, they're stored attached to a piece of steel that I've, I screwed to the underside of the, plat um, the, the side platform. And uh, now I just stuck it to another piece of steel. The, the pieces of steel are, are um, cut from the pieces that I cut out of the sides of the van to, to create the openings for the, for the rear windows. Um, and these are prop sticks, which support the bed platform when the bed is made up this is as high as i can lift it but that gives us access to to the important stuff that's stowed under the the bed platform this is inside the van uh first the rear the overhead rear storage and this is the overhead front storage both very large the, the rear one is 30 inches deep this one is about 24 inches deep and because of the sloping roof it's it's um not not nearly as as big a volume but it's still quite quite large and we've got strip lights in both of them uh, there's a, a view of the cargo net that secures everything in the in the overhead storage we've got uh, storage uh, um, units that are strapped to the backs of the seats to, to hold various things this one is is intended to is designed to to hold my travel laptop here we're getting back to the this is the counter and uh, the tea kettle that we use every day, and there's the control center for the house electric system, the microwave uh, storage unit on top of it, which holds a lot of our essential day-to-day -day silverware and uh, and paper plates, paper towels, uh, coffee, tea, and uh, and sweetener. Here we are back at the overhead front storage. Now the the cargo net is secured. I've got a couple of the pieces of our sleeping gear stowed in there. Um, here's another look at the backs of the seats with the storage units on them uh, and our our uh, center console, which is very flexible and, and practical. Uh, that's my long lens that's stored underneath the, the, the wing of the, of the table. Now we're coming around to the side. There's my solar generator, which is a standalone complete electrical system with a 100 amp hour lithium iron battery in it. Um, it's attached to one of the solar panels on the roof. Another look at the tea kettle and the microwave. And uh, next to the next to the, the solar generator is a hamper. Um, moving up, one of our rechargeable fans, and uh, um, those are rechargeable lights in the corner there. Bookcase with important reference material in it. Um, 
more storage, another look at the storage unit on top of the microwave. That's a um, the, the charge controller for the ground deploy solar panel that you, you can see attached to the wall above the, the um, storage unit on top of the microwave. And another look at the, the hamper and you can see the our toilet just coming into view there. The house electric system, most of it lives underneath the, the panels that, that the white canvas box are sitting on. And there is the main charge controller. That's a 40 amp charge controller. And we're back to the to the rear overhead storage once again with the with the cargo net secured. And now I've got the rest of our our bedding material stored in there. And that's the end of the tour. So over the over the next few videos, I'd I'd like to give you a closer look at the conversion system by system. And while many of the design details are specific to a T1N Sprinter, which would be a 1994 to 2006 vintage, but uh, they were only in, imported to, to the U.S. from 2002 to 2006. But despite the fact that they're specific to T1Ns, they, the concepts and the broader design ideas can be applied to most any maker model van. I hope you'll find some of the ideas useful for your own conversion. It's early winter and not a good time for camping in the Northeast, but it's a great time for planning and making enhancements to the van and uh, for making videos like this one. If you have questions about any of the decisions I made, the, the components I used, the conversion process, or anything else about our van, please ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer, either in the comments in a future video or both. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and, and subscribe to help me bring this content to a wider audience. And I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.